into the Ascendo Traders Group. This is our stock market wrap up for Tuesday, December 1st, 2009. Our website is blog.ascendotraders.com where we put together effective video technical analysis trading plans on a daily basis. Our trading plans get us prepared for the next trading session, make sure we're prepared for what's coming down the market that can move our positions. And by being dis disciplined and cutting down our time, we have time to spend on our families. So the day that was, well, we had renewed pressure on the dollar. And that was mainly brought, brought on because the Dubai world is close to renegotiating its debt. And so all of the European, Asian banking industries, companies that had debt with uh, Dubai, uh, their currencies of the Euro and Asian and uh, currencies rose because now it looks like, you know, this credit crisis of Dubai, which uh, was kind of centered to them, uh, is being straightened out. So as they rose, of course, the dollar fell. And we know when the dollar falls right now, uh, the market rises and so we had a good market up economic economic data was mixed uh, we had uh, pending home sales rise uh, a lot of the other information was pretty much blah um, we did have some some news coming out from GE it looks like their deal with Comcast is on its way to uh, being uh, finalized as far as spinning off in NBC Universal Ford um, and some of the auto truck sale news were kind of below expectations but economic data as a whole didn't really move the market all of our sectors ended positive and you can see we were up pretty well for today nothing on the earnings front nothing on the upgrades and downgrades front tomorrow I think we finally have some news that could move the market uh, one way or the other and that is our ADP report remember this is a precursor to the Friday's non-farm payroll report which we will also get our unemployment number for uh, November on Friday so I think ADP uh, should have some impact on the market. We still don't have anything on uh, earnings front. And so although the dollar has been driving the market, there is a potential, especially if ADP comes in better than expected. If it matches, maybe not. But if it comes in better or if it comes in higher, uh, it certainly can move the market. So first we're going to take a look at our Rubik's Cube. And we can see that we have a lot of green. Now, unlike yesterday, where we had, you know, a lot of mixture of colors on the right side of this and, and um, left side, and then we had a lot of uh, green on the financials, notice today we have green everywhere else in the financials. So again, remember the financials really are a big part of our market. So when they're up, you know, we could have been up 200 if our financials would have taken us up there with us. I mean, look at Goldman Sachs down here, really red. So. That's certainly concerning. And also you can see we took off and then we've really just consolidated for the rest of the day. So the big trading, if you're an intraday trader, was really the first uh, half hour or so. And then we kind of just went sideways for the rest of the day. We can see that we're really nice and green on our advancing declining numbers, 71% advancing. We can see 91% for our uh, new high stock. And we still have over half of the stocks above their 20 moving average. Switching over to our internals, what do we see? Well, the first thing that Schuster got to is this little red number here, which means that on the NICE, our volume went down. And we already have low volume, so that certainly is not uh, encouraging. We did have a little increase on the NASDAQ, and the NASDAQ usually is a, a good leader. We have a strong breath. Any number above 50 is bullish. So on the, the volume definitely was bullish. And our new highs, as we already said, uh, from Finviz, very good. And our advanced de declines are very good. So the internals were certainly good today, except for, again, you know, guys, know what I'm waiting for. I'm waiting for volume. I'm waiting for conviction. I'm waiting for the true trader system to come out. And hopefully tomorrow's uh, ADP will bring a little of that. So what we can see is couple things here on the daily chart first of all you can see the decrease in volume uh, which is certain concerning because yesterday we finally got some volume keeping us above the 20 moving average uh, and now we decrease on a bullish day the other thing you can see is our basically the wick of today kind of matches up with the wick from uh, Monday of last week and uh, of, of Wednesday so uh, obviously, if we can break above those highs, let's shrink it down a little bit, uh, we will be able to uh, 
get it, and it looks like these wicks are right around 10,500. So breaking above those wicks can send us to our next area of resistance, which we'll look at on the monthly charts. Switching over to the NASDAQ, we can see again this area of consolidation. Now previously, we said that if we're going to break out, we previously had talked about this line right here, right around 2190, 2200, that if we get above that level, that is going to uh, be a good breakout level. And then down here at the bottom was with the wicks down here, right around 2025. So again, let's go ahead and wait and see if, if the NASDAQ can get above that 2200 level and then we'll certainly have a good entry to play the breakout. Notice again, uh, last week we hit it and then we came right back. So um, looking to play the breakout. But also again, notice that on the NASDAQ we did have an increase in volume. On the S&P 500, we can see this consolidation pattern uh, again. Uh, right around 11.08, 11.10, we can see that we've really been hovering these highs, which is good um, because, again, here we were concerned about this 10.25 to the downside, and we were looking at this 1100. We did break above that, and then now we're kind of in this a tighter range, so getting above this uh, to around, uh, you know, 11.25 maybe, again, that'll be a good breakout level for the S&P 500. Now if we switch over to the monthly chart and we can see that with the uh, S&P 500 we still have a little room to go to get to the 50 moving average. So 50 moving average is still our target and that is around 1156. Uh, on the NASDAQ we've been hovering around the 50 av moving average basically for three months here, September, October, November, uh, this is October and November and now here we are in December so what we were watching for on a NASDAQ was this 2180 level here they get you with the highs here highs here you can see how we got some touching going on there and ta-da that's where we are today if we can break above here we're probably heading up here to this 2300 level uh, but again, we've been hovering in this range, so we really need to get above today's high to confirm that breakout. Finally, on the Dow, we are at the um, the 50 moving average, this tri triangle wedge that we've been talking about. If we can finally break through here, one more time, uh, where we are right now, with the lows here of 05. So if we can break here, certainly we can put a target of these highs, which is around 1096, uh, 11. Go on to the educational portion of our video using the book Trading in a Zone by Mark Douglas, talking about the trader's edge. Again, probabilities in trading in a moment. We've been spending the last week talking about building a sample of trades. But what's important and where a lot of people get caught up is in the believe that this pattern is a, is a guarantee. Yes, this is a contradiction because yes, patterns in the market happen over and over again. They're repeatable and that's where we as traders, professional traders, we make money off of those patterns. However, as Mark goes on to describe in this passage, the people who are making up that pattern today are not the same pa people who made th this pattern in the past. It only takes one person with a different belief of whether or not this is a high price or a low price for this stock for it to change the results of the pattern. Will the pattern play out like it did in the past? Hmm, probably, but sometimes it doesn't. And so anything can happen, but that does not keep us from enacting our system. It does not keep us from trading the patterns, trading our criteria, trading our entries and exits. Uh, we still have to believe that the patterns can fulfill themselves and then if they don't, that's okay. We'll wait for the pattern to start over again and try again the next time. So I want to thank everybody for our watching. We always like to talk about our partners. We have a great futures trading room for a 10-day trial for $39. Again, Alex is a great trader. And what I love about the room is he gives the buzzer sound for the end. He gives a sound to get out. He, it's more about protecting profit, but he answers all the questions and spends a lot of time educating and making sure people understand why and not just doing. Um, 
we've been talking about futures for uh, for the past several months. You can't beat the leverage of intraday e mini accounts of three hundred dollars. And if you go through our link, you get twenty free contracts. And we have a great uh, day trading ebook talking about how to set up your routines from day to day. Just go to our blog and you'll get that. Talking about futures, got a great uh, series of videos talking about how to get started trading on futures and why it's the best investment vehicle. And here's our link to subscribe our podcast so you can go straight to the podcast and not go to YouTube or to our website each time. Thanks, guys, and I'll see you next time.